what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2016 Cadillac ATS-V. Up front is a 3.6 liter twin turbo V6 and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be making this video here today because I've always loved Cadillac's V series vehicles, whether that be the CTS-V, STS-V or any of their other products. But the second reason is the fact that this is a manual transmission to ATSV, meaning it is only one of 425 manual coupes built throughout the ATSV's lifespan from 2016 to 2019. So this is an incredibly rare car. It's an incredibly fun car, and I'm excited to share all of it with you today. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradel.com submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 3.6 liter twin turbo V6 under the hood. Well, it's not like any of the other 3.6 liters that GM offers in the Traverse and the Blazer and the Equinox at some point in the past. No, this is actually a new, or at the time, new 3.6 liter developed for this vehicle. Of course, from the CTS-V, you do lose some of that low end torque. However, Cadillac did their homework, did their research, and this car has very little turbo lag. So I think they did a fantastic job on this engine while keeping the CTS-V the top dog and the more holy grail vehicle, I don't think that this car is any slouch. And by driving it, I can tell you, it's no slouch at all. A little bit of second gear. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Now, like I said, paired to it is a Tremec six-speed manual transmission. Now, you could find these, of course, in automatic. That was the more popular option with an eight-speed automatic. However, this is the manual. How does it feel to drive that? Well, it has a very muscle car feeling to it. Feels a lot like the Camaro for very obvious reasons. It is a little bit of a fist fight putting it into gear. It does have some of that resistance, but it also gives a better reward because you have to work for it a little bit like you do other American muscle cars or just other American shifters. If you're coming from driving Miatas and RX-7s like myself, you're gonna be in for a little bit of a fight, but if you're used to driving vehicles in this caliber, it's gonna be right on brand with anything else put out at the time, of course, like the Chevy SS. Last but not least, the ATS-V is rear wheel drive with an updated rear differential that's actually electronic and will change with the drive mode how quickly it will lock up which is very, very cool. How does it feel to drive the ATS-V? Well, it's a great driving experience. All the touch points in here are great. The steering isn't too heavy, not too light, but you could also change that with the drive modes. You have almost 500 horsepower under your right foot, and you have a six speed under your left. It's great. And one of the biggest upsides of the manual transmission, besides shifting your own gears and every other positive that comes with manual transmissions, is the fact that you can actually drive this around town and have a lot of fun with it at slower speeds. That's the issue with automatic CTSVs and automatic muscle cars in general is that at slow speeds, you're not really doing much. You got to rev them out. You got to drive them fast. The ATSV, yes, you could drive fast and it's tons of fun to do so but you can also drive it slow and appreciate it in its own way where an automatic you won't. So that is another really big benefit. Visibility is fine for a 2010s car, not really anything too crazy there. And overall, I'm a big fan. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges and a screen. Off to the left is my tachometer. In the center is my speedometer that does go up to 330. <laughs> this is actually a Canadian market car, brought down here to Chicago. So it's normally meant for kilometers, but is switched into miles per hour mode where American cars were set up for miles per hour and could go into kilometers an hour mode. 
Off to the right, we have our fuel and coolant temperature, and then a little screen down below. On the steering wheel, on the left, we have our voice commands, cruise control options, and traction control off. On the steering wheel, they know their audience very well. And off to the right, we have our volume, skip track, and select buttons. It also does have paddle shifters around the back, but these aren't actually paddle shifters. This is just to turn on and off the auto rev matching, which is a really cool feature to have here in the manual ATSV. Off to the left, we have a climate control vent, gauge dimmer switch, and our parking sensors off. And moving out of the door, we have our two levels of memory seats, lock and unlock, power mirrors, and power windows. Moving into the center, we get our infotainment system. This is, of course, a little bit outdated by today's modern standards, but you have to remember that this car is eight years old and how fast touchscreen technology really takes off but i like it and here is the backup camera in case you're curious this was two years before the government legally required backup cameras so any backup camera at all was still a luxury down below that we have our volume power home and our climate control buttons we do have heated seats here in the atsv we get dual zone climate and of course auto and if you push the button down at the bottom you actually get a little stash spot here in the atsv as well very very cool to see that then we have our cigarette lighter again hidden away and the shifter itself the shifter is finished in this very nice material either alcantara or suede i can't quite remember but it looks great and down below that we have our power parking brake and mode select buttons for the different drive modes so you can go up and down the drive modes from tour sport track and then snow and ice love that customization that is offered and then we do have cup holders so we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the atsv and very predictably it fails the owner does have a bigger cup holder, but that is aftermarket and that doesn't qualify. So overall, the ATSV from 2016 fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Then we do get a center console and the seats. The seats are very, very customizable in terms of position and seating arrangement. Tons of different options here. If you can't get comfortable in this, I don't know how to help you because Cadillac gives you plenty of options. However, I have a feeling that my tone is going to change here in a second when we get into the back of the ATS-V. So I am currently at a park called Freedom Park here in Tinley Park, a lot of parks, and there is a tank behind me um, in honor of the veterans. And I kind of wish that the tank would just turn its cannon right at my face so I don't have to get in the back seat. But I don't believe I will be that lucky. Oh, 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 I am, I am praying for that tank cannon to the face. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so I'm in the back of the ATSV. My head's hitting the ceiling. My knees are jammed into everything in this vicinity. Um, that seat is touching this back seat. These back seats are terrible. Absolutely get the sedan if you have any interest in carrying anyone else with you. These seats are perfect for a backpack, some light groceries, a teddy bear, not a human being. These back seats are awful, terrible. No good. Very bad day. I do get a 12 volt outlet. <laughs> wait, 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 time, <laughs> time out. I get a 12 volt outlet and a standard American wall outlet in the back. So I might not have kneecaps, but I could plug an Xbox in back here or a toaster or a blender. <laughs> Why? I guess it would be nice for the front seats. You could use, you know, a heating pad or something like that in the front seat. But the fact that it's in the back seat is just hilarious as if anyone would ever sit back here willingly. Let's talk about the trunk. All right, around the back of the ATSV coupe. Little double tap there on the key fob and you can bring it up. Obviously, as you can see, the owner keeps his golf clubs back here. That was one of his big prerequisites into buying this car is that he can fit his golf clubs. And it almost looks like they purposefully have cutouts on either side to accommodate one single golf bag. And they've done that beautifully. That is the rear trunk space of the ATSV. in case you were ever curious. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I love the look of the ATSV. I'm not normally a coupe fan and they did sell sedans. I think personally, 
on a personal level, that would probably be my pick. However, I don't think that this is a bad looking vehicle. It also has the carbon fiber hood. You see the bigger Brembo brakes on it. And overall, how can you look at this and say anything other than good things? You just can't because it's such a good vehicle. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving my first ATS-V here on the Shooting Cars channel? Well, it's been a great experience. I mean, there's no physical human way it wasn't going to be. Twin turbo V6, manual transmission, rear wheel drive with a trick differential. That is a winning recipe every single day of the week. And if you know anything about GM, when they get a winning recipe, they kill it. <laughs> they stab it in the heart and end it almost immediately. Every single good GM car has come to an end at some point or another. I'm looking at the Chevy SS. I'm looking at the Cobalt SS, an affordable sporty coupe. I mean, the list goes on and on. I'm sure you can leave your favorite killed project in the comments down below. But the ATS-V was very, very short-lived. And yes, the sedan did kind of morph into the CT4V that we still get here today. The ethos of this car has lived on, but the coupe never got revived. And so if you wanted a coupe ATS-V, a smaller sports sedan, a vehicle that's smaller than the CTS-V, but still packs that mighty punch, you only had four model years to do so. And if you want it in the manual, you only have about 425 to pick from. And today I'm driving one of them. This car beat the BMWs and Mercedes that were equivalent to it at the time. It had better track times than zero to 60. And it was cheaper. This car is what America used to do so well. Pack a lot of punch into a smaller price tag. We were always cheaper than the Germans. And this car, this ATS-V beat them at their own game. Germany owns the sport luxury coupe market, hands down, without a doubt, they are the rulers of that realm. And yet here we were in 2016 with the ATS-V. We took the fight to them and we beat them. We beat them fair and square at a game that they invented. And what did we do to celebrate? Uh, didn't do it ever again. We said, no thank you, we're good, adios. And that's where we stand. Here today. So I'm driving this ATSV here today, loving it and enjoying it, but more importantly, showing you what was possible, what we could have done, and what we did do only a few short years ago. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Steve for letting me take out his ATSV and letting me show off one of the coolest vehicles of the 2010s. Steve has been absolutely wonderful to work with. I am very, very appreciative, and I'm sure we'll be filming more soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.